All right, guys, welcome to my home garage, uh, part two of this BMW 328 X-Drive. We're going to be replacing the cooler, the coolant, the turbo line coolant O-rings that are leaking on this BMW. And along with that, we're going to be replacing the, all the manifold gaskets and all the gaskets associated that required when you do this job. So first thing we do is remove this shield here. And the cover for that is a E10 Torx. Using an extension about that big. Here's our shield. Our bolts. So now we can see our manifold bolts. So the next step is we gotta remove this right here. This is just a bracket. So the V-band clamp on the catalytic converter to manifold. Down there, right there. Another thing we have to take out is you have to disconnect that right there, that rod. Just disconnect the nut. You don't want to change the length. All you're going to do is disconnect the nut. And by disconnecting the nut, you're going to maintain the proper length. Does that make sense? Because we don't want to play around with the you're going to remove this bracket here to give you the play you need to uh, so we're going to remove this here now. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we're going to remove this cover here. An E12 inverted Torx. Remove this transmission bolt. And there's one more up here, and that'll remove the bracket. Okay, the okay, you also have to remove that bolt up in there and that one right there. Okay, so those two must be removed. Okay, a little update. So to remove this bracket, which sits like, sits like that, yeah, tightens around the manifold. The turbo manifold, and there are the holes for it, right there. One of the bolts you go through here to get to the, here there's one of the bolts there, that thread. And then the, ne the next one, you can see it further just below the few line, you'll come from this side to disconnect it and to disconnect that one. So the way I found to do it is loosen the exhaust, just here, loosen these, this hanger. And by loosening that hanger, it lowers the catalytic converter and it's out of your way for you to uh, be able to uh, disconnect that bolt or else you can't get it out. You'll, you'll strip it. Okay, there's our turbo. Let's check the, how, the wheel. The wheel has no play. So to do all this, to do all this, I loosened the mount, but I'm not sure if I needed to, so I'm gonna put it back on and see what happens. Okay, so removal of the mount is not required. You can easily access that bolt. And then the one behind, you should be able to see right there. Right above that one, sorry. You're gonna go through here pretty much. See where my finger is? There's a bolt there. You're just gonna slide a, a long extension through with a swivel and to take those two nuts out up there. I'm pretty sure they're T, T10s. That's how you move that. So now our turbo manifold is loose. So, so our, our there's no tension on our wires. That's what matters on our O2 sensor. So the exhaust can hang here. We're gonna have to put a new nut here to hold the exhaust, no big deal. We'll clean it up, we'll get a, a socket, a bolt and a nut to clamp this back down, tighten up the exhaust and this will be good to go. Once we are done removing the turbo manifold, which should be ready to go because the clamp is off. So now we're gonna move up to the top again. The next step is we are gonna remove the actual manifold. It is 11 millimeters. So we're gonna start from the outside and move in. And we're going to hope that none of them are, are stripped. 
All right, so I did a little bit of work off camera. It was just too difficult. So I removed the oil cooler line. You can see that right there off the bottom of the turbo. I removed the coolant line underneath the vehicle. It has two hoses. That's what we're replacing is these two hoses. As you can see, they don't look very good. Look, they shouldn't be moving. This crimp should be tighter. The seals are completely perished. I honestly don't feel confident just replacing the seals. I think I should replace the lines as well. That's my gut feeling on this one. Is this is just too loose. Like I can pull these out of their connections. So um, I'm gonna order those two lines. This is the other one. This one doesn't look too bad, but um, the amount of work required to get here, you might as well do it. So, what did I take off the turbo? I took the actuator off here, these two bolts right here, and then the actuator comes off. Here it is right here. I did that on the vehicle. Then this is, um, is screwed in all the way, and it sits behind a tab. It sits right behind there. So you want to unscrew that before you remove the turbo. So you want to unscrew that before you remove the turbo. And when you, the first thing that comes off of that is this line here, which screws onto the turbo. This is your inlet for the oil. You want to remove that, which is at the top part. You got to remove these coolant hoses. One. You got to take this PCV stuff off of that other hose. You got to take all this stuff off because you need all this space. You got to remove the the high pressure, uh, the pressure side of the turbo. You just pretty much lift these two tabs up, both of them, and then it'll slide out as you can see inside. Okay, so once you do that, you slide all this stuff out of the way. You All these hoses you put over there, and then the turbo comes out this way and then down and then comes up like this and I'll show you guys the way I put it back in but I know some people take it out through the bottom which involves removing the exhaust and possibly a mount but it, you can get it out this way you just gotta maneuver it another thing you must disconnect is the oil line see where the oil is leaking right there right there that is this line here it uses these little bolts like this. So make sure you replace all the oil lines. Even though this oil line doesn't seem too bad, I can feel the ridge on it. I'm replacing all the oil lines and I'm replacing the coolant hoses. I don't think there's any way around this. I don't want to be in here again. Uh, some of the studs stayed on the exhaust. Uh, sorry, it came off with the exhaust. So tomorrow I'll probably take these three off. I have a, a method to do it. And then uh, I'll slide them back onto the actual uh, head because I have all new nuts. So tomorrow's job is to clean everything up, prep, clean up, get new hoses, brand new hoses, uh, one exhaust stud, and then we're good. All right, guys. So we have here is studs that I cannot remove. I can't remove the, the actual nuts for the manifold because they're seized on the studs. So I got a little trick that I'm doing. I've tried other ways, but this is all that's working right now, which is putting this in here, safety goggles. These nuts are copper. So we're gonna cut through it. damage and okay, now we take this out of here as you can see just enough that it uh, weakens the threads okay so now you're gonna do this you're gonna tidy up the threads with our a die a tap and die kit this is a seven millimeter die and it's a one uh, 0.10 p 
pitch. So what we're gonna do is first we're gonna clean the, thre clean the threads that Okay, so take your stud. I get a little bit of anti-seize, and I just put it on my stud here. Okay, find where your studs were coming out of the block. Screw it in. You should go in by hand. Grab your little ratchet. You should screw it in. It shouldn't take too much effort. Take a look inside. So I still got a couple more to do. So that's how you're gonna fix that situation so that you can put your new nuts on. Another thing we're gonna replace is this bottle because it has a crack. Okay, once you have installed this back down in the same position, reconnect your upper hose to the reservoir. Confirm your connections underneath, especially the connector clicks. You wanna make sure you push it until it clicks. And the best way is when you have these uh, clips out. And you have these out, including the lower one. So to remove it, you would do this. You would pry this back like so, to remove it. Same thing to install it. You would put it on first, clip down, now you're tight. So you wanna do the same thing with the lower rad hose. And now this is back on. We have our studs done. The next step is replacing the gaskets on the manifold in preparation for reinstalling the coolant lines and the turbo. Okay, as we prepare to remove these, it's simple. You just wanna get a screwdriver underneath. Three, here's our new uh, rings, four of them. We just want to slide them on like so. Do the same on all the sides. That is all done and ready to roll. These are the new oil rings and coolant rings. They're both. So we're going to swap them out. Try not to damage them. I'm just going to work it around like that. Okay, this is your old one, here's your new one, you want to lubricate it. Once you have it lubricated, you're going to use the same method you took it off. So, and there's your new oil ring, there's one anyways. And now the oil ring on here is quite rusty. Wrench it. Make sure you're not in the way of anything. And we're gonna we're gonna tidy up all these bolts. After wiggling it around for a while, I finally got it out. And uh, yeah, the line was completely. Check it out. The line is completely rusted. I mean, the actual um, the corrosion buildup is what. I'm surprised this line didn't leak. To be honest with you. Spray some brake clean in there and really clean up that hole because the lock. Same thing with our cooling passages that we cleaned up the other day. We're just gonna clean it out. All right guys, step one of putting everything back together now is uh, reconnecting your coolant lines. So one of them goes there and one of them goes behind, right there, see there? So one and two. So we're gonna reconnect those and it's 10 newton meters to tighten them. We're gonna lubricate the seal of our brand new Turbo coolant pipe. Okay, so this one goes in like this. It is a T30 Torx. So, tighten it up. Okay, 88 inch pounds. 
you can see down there there's the line right there and it's tightened the block okay the next step is the other line make sure you have the right side so this goes like so like this and then this side is that goes on the turbo leave the covering on to so you don't damage the seal you might have to kind of twist it around to get it in it'll clip in once it does grab your bolt get it started by hand same thing 88 inch pounds and torque it up done okay now you're going to want to get everything out of the way all these pipes have to get out of the way so that you can get to uh installing your turbo so let's get a light above us okay so i know i didn't show this in the previous but all these tubes have to move out of the way, so I already drained the coolant. You can get another drain under here in case it leaks some more. You're gonna lift the tab on the coolant pipe, release it, and then just kind of wiggle it off. Here's one coolant pipe, so you're gonna get it out of the way. And then over here, somewhere. Okay, your charge pipe, bend it, it's rubber, and move it over here as well. You want all your pipes out of the way. Okay. Also, this pipe here, same idea right here. Let's see where the connection is. Okay. Right here, you just want to lift the metal, wiggle it off. And there you go. Move this coolant pipe over here as well. So now everything is out of the way for your turbo to come in. Same thing with this, you don't want to damage these pipes. You want them all out of the way as best as you can. Same thing with the wiring. Get the wiring out of the way. There's gonna be some maneuvering in, to be done once uh, I bring the turbo in here to get it in. I, got, I can't really remember how it went in, but I will figure it out. Okay, so let's get the pipe now. So here's your turbo. Just trying to remember how it went down in here. an update where I am so you're gonna want to put a new seal that you put on that oil line put it in there and it's eight millimeter uh, eight newton meters to tighten all right so you're gonna want to reconnect this clamp here which means you might have to disconnect uh, that bolt there to loosen it up to line this up you want to tighten uh, put a new gasket on there with the two new bolt, the two bolts, tighten that up. Uh, the actual coolant lines, reattach them. The top one goes on first, then the secondary one, you might have to like pry them on and then same thing, put your nut on. Okay, so once you get the lines all connected from underneath, so the oil feed line to the bottom of the block, the return line to the bottom of the turbo, you gotta fiddle with the gaskets and the little Torx bolts. You gotta fiddle with the coolant lines, you gotta push them on, use a pry bar to press on them so that you can get the Allen bolt in and you torque them all down to the appropriate spec, which is 88 inch pounds, inch pounds. Now, cause you need a little bit of that movement from the manifold, now you can reattach the bracket that connects to the bottom of the manifold. But first I'm gonna do is torque all the bolts for the manifold down. That's the way you should torque them down. That's the orientation. They torque down to the 
13 newton meters, not much at all. So that's what I'm gonna do now. Once you have torqued down the manifold in the correct procedure, redo the procedure twice because the other ones will loosen off from the gaskets crushing on the manifold. So make sure you redo it. Then you can reattach this bolt right down here and tighten it up, which holds the turbo to the block. So tighten it on by hand and then just give it a, I'll check the torque, but like it should be good by hand. And now we're just going to be starting to put pipes back together, the wastegate and all that. So we're going to get to that now. So what we're doing is we're lining up our diverter valve. So the bolt, the other bolt is right behind here. So you just want to kind of find the hole with your finger, grab your extension, go from underneath. Where's that? What the hell? How did it fuck that? Okay. That's tight. Plug it in. You can hear a click. Okay, so now we have to connect our exhaust from underneath, but I think we can connect our rod first. Just to show you guys what we're dealing with. Okay, we have this rod here, but the pin on the actual wastegate is broken. So BMW cleverly designed this uh, repair clip, which slides on like this. So once you get this over the turbo, slide on like, slides on like so, like from underneath. So it goes on the pin and it slides up. So I'll show you guys once it's on. I almost had a panic because I almost lost this special bolt that holds the wastegate on, and I was gonna lose my shit. Because this is not uh, a standard bolt here, okay? So, do not lose your, do not lose your wastegate bolt. You will hate your life. Well. Take a look at the repair now. Can you guys see what it looks like? Take a look. See that little piece right there? It attaches onto there. Can you guys see that? Okay, so to get that bracket, to get this bracket right there on and line up the bolts and get enough space, I had to support the motor disconnect the engine bracket uh mount four bolts and peel it back and use a swivel with an extension from the back side to line up the back bolt which is i don't know if anyone could see it but you can see it right there i'll try to put my finger on it right there see that right there you gotta line up that bolt there's not a lot of room so now I'm going to reassemble the rest of the stuff, put on the clamp for the downpipe, fix this clamp here, tighten up the exhaust, and uh, get everything cleaned up. Okay, so you use the engine support, mount is back on, all the mounts are tight, this bolt's back on, that bolt's back on, this bracket's back on, I just got to put a bolt here for the exhaust once I find one that fits. The clamp is on and ready to be tightened from the top. All the bolts are back on, so a good time to brake clean everything. Uh, next step is we got to replace the oil level sensor, which is leaking. Drain the oil, new oil, new filter, coolant, uh, bleed the system, and reattach everything up top. Okay, so we're going to change the oil before we get the car started and double check everything. So. So we're actually going to try and clean some of this dirty oil up. We're going to drain the oil now, 17 millimeter, and we're going to remove the oil level sensor and replace the gasket. So that's the next step. Once you remove your uh, oil level sensor, it's three 10 millimeter screws and a connector. You can uh, just wiggle it out and your seal is right there. That little white film, that's my new seal. You just pry the old one out, pop the new one in, lubricate it and you're ready to pop everything back in. But before you remove the oil level sensor, I recommend you 
spray clean and clean the whole entire area before you even remove it just so that everything's clean and no dirt is getting anywhere okay so now i'm going to re reinstall so i cleaned out the housing now i'm just going to replace these seals always replace these seals the reason you always replace these seals is because it's one of the most common places to have oil leaks people will go years without changing them and then you'll think you have a major oil leak and it's just someone didn't change the seal so old seal make sure you throw it away lubricate it you can just use your hands and roll it on This isn't an oil change video. I'll do one in the future on this car. This is really just about those turbo lines. This is just happens to be occurring. So there we go. You wanna replace this one. This is very important too. This must be for your valve, for your, uh, to maintain oil pressure when you're not using it. I'm assuming, not 100%. The reason you go to BMW to buy this is because at least you know you're getting every single seal. And sometimes when you buy aftermarket filters, they don't come with all the seals. So now you're kind of screwing yourself. You know what I mean? There you go, all by hand. Grab your filter, doesn't matter which way it goes. Filter on, replace your drain plug gasket. Wipe it all down. I've had the oil draining all night. Okay, new gasket on. Okay. So the torque on the drain plug is 18 foot-pounds or 25 newton meters. Okay, that's torqued. Now we got our filter. We're gonna fill the housing first. This will help prime the system. Don't fill it up all the way, you'll get some spillage. So now as you put this in here, it'll soak into the filter. This is also 25 newton meters if you have a special tool. Tight, clean up the area. It's six five liters. Okay. Okay. So now the coolant procedure is to open this. Open this one. Open one that's on the, it's right here underneath the upper rad house. So you're just supposed to wait until coolant comes out of there. That's the idea from BMW. Once coolant starts coming out of there, once you see a steady stream of coolant, no bubbles, you can close it. Okay, there it is. Okay, it's only three newton meters, so it's not a, a lot of, uh, Pressure. The next one you open is this one until you see coolant coming out of this housing right here. Okay. You'll hear the air coming out. There's air in the system. Once you see coolant coming out of here, steady flow. You know that coolant's here now too. All right. There we go. So what you want to do is now is spray some brake clean in those spots just to clear the mess you made. You don't want to think you have a cool leak when you don't. Put this right here. Just add some cool Okay. Once you've done that, there is a procedure to bleed the cooling system. I'll read it to you just now. So unscrew, open the bleeder expansion tank, open the bleeder at the transmission cooler till coolant emerges. We did that. Close them, then open the bleeder at the return hose until coolant emerges without bubbles. We did that, and then close the, uh, close the bleeder, and then close the bleeder at the expansion tank. So, we will also now close the bleeder at the expansion tank. Okay. So, once we do that, we got to get a charger on the battery. So, we're going to do that right now. Get a charger on the battery. Okay, the battery has a charger on it now. So, the next step is... Turn the ignition switch on. Check that the driving experience switch is set to Eco Pro switch position. Set, I'll show you guys, you guys could do this on your own. That's what it wants you to do. Check that the driving experience is set to Eco position. Set the heating to max, blower setting to the lowest, and accelerator pedal to the floor and hold it for 10 seconds. The cooling system bleeding routine will be initiated. 
engine must not be started. So that's what we're doing right now. Do not start the vehicle. Ignition switch on. Temperature max. Okay. Fan speed the lowest. Low beam lights. Low beams are on. Then hold the accelerator pedal for 10 seconds. I hear the procedure starting. I hear the pump moving. So now I just gotta keep the coolant topped up. This runs for 10 minutes. You guys can check it out. You can hear it running, doing its thing. It's gonna seem like the system's done its coolant procedure, but it's not. So just leave it on. You can see it's working this magic. I'm gonna put this in here so it deflects down instead of deflecting up, okay? Okay, so it's doing its magic. It's still working. So just let it go all the way through the process. It says about approximately 12 minutes. That's why you leave the, the charger on it, okay? So it's just doing its thing. You can see it right there. This is what's going on in the vehicle. Absolutely nothing. The vehicle has no idea what's going on. It's just doing this procedure. You can see it. It's spitting out of this hose. And the level has gone down from where I put it. So if it goes any lower than that middle mark, just top it up. And this should take approximately 12 minutes. And the water pump is just doing its thing because it's an electronic water pump. This will ensure there's no bubbles in the cooling system. Check your connections here. There's the other expansion connection right there. Make sure there's no leaks from any of them. So once this is done, I'll come back. Now that the vehicle looks like it's completed its cooling cycle, I'm going to turn the vehicle key off, disconnect the battery charger, close the trunk, and start the vehicle. Make sure there's no lights and let it run to operating temperature. We're now going to let the vehicle run. There's no check engine lights till it reaches operating temperature. Then we'll lift the vehicle up and double check everything. Okay, the electric fans have activated on the vehicle. So now we can safely reassemble the vehicle and go for a road test. On the drive, we're done with it. So I'm just going to reassemble these plates. All right, guys. So first cover you're going to put on when you reattach everything underneath after you confirm there's no coolant leaks and oil leaks from your oil change, your valve cover gasket, and your coolant turbo lines, which is what we did in this video. So reattach all your covers. There's a nut right there. That one's a nut right there, 10 mil. The rest of them are 8 mils. One, two, three. There's tons of them. The first cover that goes on is the steel plate. It's tightened to... 20 foot pounds or sorry 28 newton meters this these ones here are 28 newton meters these who cares just a cover it goes on after this plate this is actually a structural part of the vehicle almost like a, a part of the subframe that helps the integrity of the suspension engine all the cradles just double check one more time you have no leaks from your repair which we don't and we hope it remains that way so here we go, all the covers are on. So now we're gonna go for a road test and confirm our repair.